The late 30s was a memorable era. Hitler's forces were in full effect, and Canada was at war. Cinematic history was made with Gone with the Wind and The Wizard of Oz, and the Great Depression was nearing its conclusion. But for a young family in Ontario, it would be remembered as the time when their family was broken apart, and their beloved Albert was admitted to an institution. I just remember my mother crying a great deal. And uh, Dad was a very quiet man, and I imagine held most of his pain in. I know uh, one time he did tell me, and this was in just years before he died, he said, you know, when I knew that nothing could be done for Albert, he said, my, I felt for a while as if my life was over. At age three, Albert contracted whooping cough and suffered a brain injury. So at five years of age, at the urging of their doctor, Albert's family admitted him to the institution in Orillia. For 70 years, Albert lived there. We'll never know all that he experienced, and for most of us, we can never imagine what he lived through. The rhythm, routines, and lifestyle of institutional life, even in 2007, was alarming. I expected the Institute living to be a lot different. I thought that it was going to be changed. And when I got there, I realized that it wasn't. It was so, you know, uh, scheduled and robotic-like. Breakfast time, I think, was the start of the day, and they would have their breakfast, and they ate within about a half an hour time. And the, the support staff there then said shower time, and everybody got up. They went to their rooms, they got the stuff that they needed to shower, and they all proceeded to the shower room. So it was like one sentence that was said, and everybody knew what to do. Like there wasn't any other conversation, there was no talking, you know, like how's your day, how's your morning, how was breakfast? It was just up, go, let's get going. And then it went from there to coffee time or into a work, work room where they were doing painting or something. And it was just schedule, schedule, schedule. They took showers together in, like in the same room and a big bathing area so there was lines like walls of showers that were open like no curtains or anything and I believe two bathtubs so and it was men and women at the same time that would shower together. If there was one positive that came out of Albert's time at Heronia it was a lifelong friendship with his buddy Bert. As far as I know, they were friends before they moved in as roommates. Once they became roommates, and they were roommates for 35 years, I think they became, they, they had a very good, strong bond. At one point, apparently, um, staff up there tried to separate them and put them on different parts because I guess they, they didn't want them to be sort of codependent on one another. But they would walk the halls until they found each other. In 1987, the Ministry of Community and Social Services announced that all institutions in Ontario would be closed by the year 2012. But despite the obvious shortcomings of institutional life, a number of families were concerned about the alternative arrangements and fought the move. I was very worried. I was afraid that possibly they may put him in a nursing home and I didn't want a nursing home environment for him. It would be uh, hard for him to accept. Brampton Caledon Community Living stepped up to offer Albert and his family a solution. As the process to move him from Huronia was underway, they quickly realized there'd been an oversight. Bert became aware of the plans to move Albert and made his views clearly known. If Albert was moving, he was going with him. Bert's family had many of the same concerns as Albert's, but after a little investigation, it didn't take long for them to feel comfortable with the plan. When we heard that Bert was um, coming out of the institution, uh, because, I mean, let's face it, it is a big institution, and when he was coming up to this setting in Brampton here, and uh, we come up and seen the house, it was like, wow, I, I made a comment. You know, when can I move in, right? So, yeah, no, we're, we're quite pleased with it. 
one of the, the most heartbreaking things is when they came for they came for lunch to see the house, and they came in and they were just I'd never seen two people run like so fast like in and out of the rooms, and um, Albert sat in one chair, Bert sat in one chair. They both sat on the couch, you know, everywhere, all over. And it was, but when they had to go, it was hard for them to understand. It's like, okay, we're here. Why are we leaving now? Like, why are you making us leave? And that was a little bit, you know, sad. So on December 18th, 2007, Bert and Albert moved into their new home in Brampton. The men had little trouble with the move, but after a combined 130 years in Aurelia, it took some time to overcome the restrictions and rigid routines inherent to institutional life. I expected there to be more adjustments for them, um, but it was simple things. It was, um, I guess, reassuring them that they could go into the fridge and get a drink. Like, this is where the glasses are, and this is, you know, this is where the juice is. This, And for the longest time, um, Bert especially would stand in front of the fridge and just stand there. and. You know, we'd have to ask him, the staff would have to say, would you like something? And then, then he would say, yeah, and we'd say, go in the fridge. And it was like a look of, like, what do you mean, go in, go in the fridge and get my own, so. The short time Bert has been here compared to the institution, um, like I said, I, I, I see him dress better. I know in Aurelia there at the end there, he was getting pretty thin, and I, I know a lot of that was his health, but, you know, I also get the feeling because the kitchen's here and, uh, He's quite welcome to roam around his home that he's probably snacking a little bit, so he has put a few pounds on. Um, just the fact that he lays on the couch, you know, and uh, he ain't getting up for nobody. I got to tell me that he feels like he's at home. So, yeah, I, I, can, see a big, I can see a big difference in Bert, you know. Um, just seems to be more, more relaxed, um, doesn't seem to be on edge. Much more calm. Um, he was always kind of agitated uh, and he's just mellowed right out and he seems so relaxed here. Together, Albert and Bert are reclaiming their lives. They're learning to appreciate the many opportunities that most of us take for granted. Opportunities like choosing what and when they will eat. Having privacy in their own room and bathroom having a place to host and entertain their friends and family, having a home where they feel safe and their belongings are safe, having an opportunity to learn new things and develop new passions. For decades, every aspect of their daily care was provided for them. Bert, in particular, takes great pride in working around his home and taking care of himself. He's been assisting us cooking, taking out gar um, the recycling bins, doing a lot of <laughs> work that we thought we couldn't get him to do, but a lot of improvement has been done and more vacuuming, he does a good job doing that. He makes cakes, goes to cake decorating class, which he enjoys decorating cakes and also bake at the house. Bird likes to make pasta. That's his favorite food. So once we get that going, mmm, you hear that sound. While Bert's passion is food, Albert's is trains, streetcars, and vehicles. He has lots of room to set up and work on a train system in the basement, and his bedroom is covered with his treasures. While at Huronia, they both developed a passion they share. Painting is an activity they both enjoy and their work is displayed around the home. Albert has a definitive, detailed style and an incredible skill as an artist. Recently, they both started attending the Brampton Visual Arts Centre to paint. I don't really know much about art, but um, I know that Albert and Bart have lovely, lovely paintings. And when we went to, when we flew to Ottawa in the fall for the exhibition, um, there were many people that offered to buy their paintings but uh, we did tell them it was not for sale. Abad wouldn't want to sell his painting from our understanding so they were li really very disappointed because they were offering quite you know good amount of money 
to purchase those paintings. Lovely paintings. Albert and Bert are two men who are soulmates and who together are reclaiming their lives and their dignity in Brampton. While they won't come right out and say it, we all know they're thrilled to be here. Thank God. <laughs> I'd say he'd say thank God if he could verbalize it at all. I, I would say he's very happy here. I think he really enjoys everything about the house. Just a very positive experience for uh, not only for Albert and for Bert, but for their families as well. I don't think he'd want to go back to Royal. <laughs> I, I think he'd want to stay here. His dear friend Bert is here. Bert is happy and he is happy. A happy Albert is all I could ask for. I'd like him to live the rest of his days out enjoying himself the way he is now. And for that I'll be eternally grateful. I think that they would tell us all that they're very, very happy and they're very at ease and at peace here in their new home. I'm sorry, Albert. Okay. Streetcar? Maybe we'll go on the streetcars tomorrow. Go on tomorrow. Okay, we can do that. Go on tomorrow. Do you want me to come and get you after lunch? Be gone tomorrow. Okay. Be gone tomorrow. We will do that. Tomorrow. Okay.